Hello, this is Ron Sipsik, and this is the third part of a four-part series on expenditure line analysis. In this particular segment, we're going to take a look at how a decrease in autonomous expenditures leads to a recession. A recession is a decrease in GDP, and recessions are often accompanied by higher unemployment. So we go ahead and we set up our expenditure line model, and uh, we set it up with the numbers we developed in the previous segment. We'll just scoot this up and take a quick look at it before I explain the initial information. Notice our model is set up in equilibrium at 3,400, which we determined in our second segment. And this uh, equilibrium level was based on A of 850. And if you recall, MPC, MPC was equal to 0.75 in that particular example that we did in segment two. So based on an MPC of 0.75 and autonomous spending of 850, we were able to determine a GDP level and a TPE level in equilibrium. So this is where we begin the analysis. Now, let's go up above here and I want to develop a scenario. Let's suppose that there's a drop in confidence in the nation. This could be for economic reasons, political reasons, military reasons. Uh, for instance, uh, an example that comes to mind is terrorism. One of the primary purposes of terrorism is to destroy the confidence of a people, of a nation. And so terroristic acts are meant to cause panic. And of course, the economic consequences of panic would be people don't spend as much, particularly when it comes to durable goods, things like uh, appliances, things like automobiles, big ticket items. Uh, households are not as likely to buy those things when they're not as confident about the future. Likewise, businesses are not likely to invest when they feel that the future is uncertain, that their future profits are uncertain, and they're not sure that they're going to get a return on their investment. So this is where we start the analysis. We assume that there's been a drop in confidence and this drop in confidence leads to a drop in consumption spending and a drop in investment spending. Notice that the, this drop in spending is actually a drop in autonomous spending. Why? Because the, the cause was something other than GDP. We're actually holding GDP constant at this point in the analysis and we're saying that the drop in spending was caused by something other than GDP. So then if we, we go ahead and we move down and put the, uh, put the model in focus here, we can see that this is going to shift our expenditure line downward. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that. I'll use a different color here. So we're going to shift the expenditure line downward. And this is not, of course, drawn to scale, but we're going to um, do the best we can. So the expenditure line has moved down. We've not designated an amount yet. We will in a minute. And now this is C plus I plus G plus X minus M2. And we've moved actually to a point below the 45 degree line. Notice I started the analysis out at point A. That's an equilibrium point. Now we have moved to point B. And notice that point B is below equilibrium. We talked about point B in our second segment, and we said this is going to be a point where GDP is actually greater than TPE. And let's say that the drop in A, let's say that A drops uh, to 750. So the drop is 100. That's a very large drop in A. So A drops by $100 from A1 to A2. So this drop is a $100 drop, which means GDP is still $3,400, but TPE is only $3,300. And you can see this because, again, the line is, a, the line is shifting parallel, and so the drop is 100 here. If the drop in A is 100, the drop between A and B has to be 100. So now TPE has dropped down to this point right here. So the rate of spending has dropped to 3,300 when the rate of GDP is 3,400. 
well, this is not going to be stable. This is going to lead to an unplanned inventory accumulation. So inventory levels are going to build up unexpectedly. And what ends up happening when inventory levels build up unexpectedly, business people respond by cutting their output rate. And when they cut their output rate, GDP is going to begin to fall. So again, what happened initially was a drop in spending, but that drop in spending is going to lead to a further, to a drop in GDP. And where is GDP going to move towards? It's going to move towards this equilibrium point, which is GDP 2. So GDP is going to begin to drop. Why is GDP dropping? Because inventory levels are rising. But as GDP drops, Spending is going to drop further. This is not drawn to scale. But spending is going to begin to drop. Remember that lower GDP leads to lower disposable income. Lower disposable income leads to lower consumption. And lower consumption leads to lower spending. We talked about this uh, in our first lesson. So this is going to be TPE2. Now, we can find the amounts here. We can find the level of GDP at the new equilibrium point. But before I do that, let's label this new point, point C. So here's what happened. The system moved off equilibrium to point B. Point B is a point of what? It's a point of instability. This is unstable. It's an, in, uh, it's an unstable outcome. It's a place of instability. Why is this an unstable outcome? Because GDP is greater than TPE. The system is not in equilibrium. Inventory levels are going to begin to rise as spending drops. As uh, 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 inventory levels rise, that's another sign that profits are below what is expected. Business people are going to see falling profits. And again, their, their response to this is going to be uh, a cutback in the output rate, which is going to push, the un, uh, push, the, push GDP lo uh, lower. But it's also going to push the unemployment rate higher. Now we don't see the unemployment rate on the graph. The graph doesn't illustrate that, but we can we know that as GDP falls, cyclical unemployment is going to increase. Now let's go ahead and calculate uh, the new new equilibrium level. So let's scroll down. I'll, I'll do the calculation be, below the diagram then I'll come back up to the diagram. So in segment Two, we learn that if you take A, in this case it'll be A2, and you divide it by MPS, you get equilibrium GDP2. Okay, now we remember we said MPS is equal to 0.75, therefore M, excuse me, that's not correct. Let me check that. Erase that. MPC is 0.75, which means MPS is 0 0.25. 0 0.25. Because remember, together they must add up to 1. So if we know MPC, we know MPS. So now we have 750, 750 divided by 0 0.25 equals 3,000. 3,000. Okay? So this new GDP number is 3,000. And let me move up. Let me move the, the, the graph. Actually, move up, but I'll move the graph down. Move that over. And our new TPE level is 3,000. So what ends up happening here, let's, let's run this again. The, the drop initially is 100, but that causes GDP to drop by 400, which causes spending to drop another 300. You go, well, how do you know it's another 300? Because we're moving from A to C ultimately. Remember this. And if you move down a 45-degree line, the distance on the x-axis, the GDP axis, has to equal the total distance of change on the y-axis, the TPE axis. So what happened here was there was an initial drop in spending of 100. In fact, let me go ahead and write this out. I would like to write this out below so you can actually 
write this down. So here's what happens. I'm going to summarize this for him, use a different color here. The, um, the drop in A was what? A drop of 100. That led to a very, let me, let me use, I'll tell you what, let me, rather than using negative signs here, let's use arrows because we'll really see this better. So the drop in A was a drop of $100. That led to a very large drop in GDP. Of what? Of That led to a drop of what? $400. Notice this is a 1 to 4 relationship. I'll talk about that in a minute. But that drop in GDP led to a further drop in spending. Remember, this, this is a drop in spending here, too. A is part of spending. This was caused by the drop in confidence. The initial drop in spending was caused by the drop in confidence. But this later drop in spending is caused by a drop in income. Remember, if there's a drop in GDP, there's going to be a drop in disposable income, which will lead to a drop in consumption, which leads to a drop in TPE. So the drop in TPE is a function of GDP. Okay, But notice the total drop in spending will add up and equal the total drop in GDP. Now, it's very interesting to look at this whole issue of how a $1 change in A leads to a much larger change in GDP. And this has to do with something called a spending multiplier process. And it's really beyond the scope of this lesson for me to go into this. I will not be going into the spending multiplier process in this in this particular lesson, but you see here that a one dollar a one dollar drop in A led to a four dollar drop in GDP. And really what this boils down to is when there's a drop in spending, there's a drop in income, which leads to a further drop in spending, which leads uh, to a further drop in income, and there's what we call a multiplier effect working here. All right, so let's go back up to the top and uh, take a look at our diagram and summarize what we what we did. So, uh, if this was the result of terrorism, the terror terrorists accomplished their their goal. Um, excuse me, I gotta. If this was caused by terrorism. Uh, the terrorists accomplished their goal. You say, well, how so? Well, they were able to what? They were able to push GDP down. And by pushing GDP down, they were able to cause what we call a recession. And falling GDP is associated with what? Uh, falling GDP is going to cause what? It's going to cause an increase in unemployment. So this is going to boost the unemployment rate. And uh, this is exactly what terrorists are trying to do when they're trying to destabilize an economic power. Uh, by causing consumers to panic, uh, they are able to decrease the spending rate. And notice the spending rate becomes weak. And when that spending rate becomes weak, it sets off a chain reaction. Inventory levels begin to rise. Businesses respond to that. Output begins to drop. Uh, when output GDP begins to drop, incomes drop, spending drops further, and it just starts to snowball. Okay, so this is exactly what we showed with our model. All right. Now, in the next episode or in the next segment, we'll show the opposite. We'll show an expansion, uh, and we'll show the opposite result. That when the expenditure line shifts up, when there's some factor that positively impacts autonomous spending, that that, that will be expansionary.